Peace, everyone. Welcome to the Moroccan Post School of Government and International Law Advanced Study Group. This is session four. This is session four. We're going to do, we're doing part two. Part two of the, we'll have the title up there soon. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to do a, a little uh, marketing. Uh, see you get up there, Terrence. All right, so we have the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law. Uh, go to our YouTube, the Moroccan Post Media YouTube page. And you'll you'll see the we have a host of free free classes on there. The Moroccan Post, the uh, the Moist Treaty Protection and Constellations. And we, we have the Moist Body Politic Formation and Constitutional Principle course, which embodies 12 classes. All right. I'm sorry, we'll, whole, we'll have that up I'm, next. I'm, but, um, I'm waiting for you to put it up there. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, All right, second, so we have. It's a little crazy right now. All uh, right, no problem. So we, we have the, as you all know, the class, the Moroccan Post, the uh, the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law, Advanced Study Group Telegram page, uh, host of links. Uh, I posted the images that we'll be using tonight on the the on the Telegram page. I I posted the. The treaty of the, the 1783 Treaty of Paris between Great Britain and the United States on the Moroccan on on the Telegram page, and uh, other comments I made in preparation. Like on the Telegram page, I suggested the students to read the Article One and Two in preparations for the day's the study group session. It's on the for the Love of Moors and the Moroccan Post. Uh, School of Government International Laws Advanced Study Group page, top Telegram page. So it's on both pages. It's also on Brother Kono's uh, page on his um, on Messenger community. What is it, El Kono? Community United Help. All right. Community United Help on the on his uh, media on the. Um, where is it all located? It's on my it's it's on my on the messenger and it should be on my Facebook page. All right, good. So I always will post on his page as well. All right. So we all see right. the flyer. Oh, we had the flyer up there. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it back right now. Yes. We'll also we'll also have um Okono's um information and everything, you know, up next time. Um so uh, we have Brother Quasi's events, the uh, Quasi Study Group. Uh, Quasi, Brother Quasi, uh, he's Ujima, Ujima Tribe. Quasi had a great study, a uh, great lesson on Easter yesterday. So it's uh, great to see someone else teach on the true meaning and astronomical origin of Easter in the relationship to Venus and the feminine principles. Quasi did a great, great job last night. So his his class if his class is every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Uh, you have Brother Kono's class is on. Uh, when's your class, Brother Kono? The, the, the third and second and fourth Thursday of each month. All right. So let me know when you have it up there, Terrence. I'm just waiting for you to get the stuff up there. Oh, you wasn't able to see it. You didn't see the flyer. I saw it. Then disappeared. Okay. So hold on. Um, let me yeah, just see it. Now, yes, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm ready. All, all right, right here we have. All right, so I see it now. Okay, all right, save this day coming May 18, 2024, in Philadelphia. Moorish, Moorish, Moorish American governance, birthright, and nationality claim conference. Um, I can't increase the size for some uh, reason. Yeah, this is because it's uh, it's not on that platform, it's not on the the actual Zoom. All right. The Zoom. All right. But is the other ones on the Zoom or no? Um, 
because yeah. I have to be able to increase the size of for the so one. So, so I won't be able to read it then because I can't see it. All right, so hold on, let me see. See if I can uh, increase it for you. This is the political unity side. If the, it's uh, on May 18th, 2024, location Majestic Call, 800 West Alney Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Time from 10.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. Get your tickets soon. Uh, this The Eventbrite link is, uh, I can post the Eventbrite link again, the flyer and the Eventbrite link on the Telegram page. And it's also pinned on uh, my my Facebook page, Abdullah Bay. Can everyone see this um, clearly? Yeah, I just I can't guess. blow it up, so I can't. I can't uh, see. Yeah, so we can go. We can move to the next slide. Uh, move to the actual presentation, Terrence, yep. so we can get to get. All right, good. All right, Terrence Bay, co-founder and administrator of the Moroccan Post School of Government and International Law, Shem Malakai Bay, co-founder, curriculum developer and teacher, Abdullah Il Talimo Bay, co-founder, curriculum developer and teacher, King El Bay, teacher. This was a, uh, I'm sorry, this was uh, All right, we have here the Moroccan Post that. School of Government and International Law Advanced Study Group from February 24th to August, February 20, February 2024, to August 2024. Um, the, this is day study group session, as uh, session four. The free recorded courses and seminars on the Moroccan Post Media YouTube page. Body, Moorish Body Politic Formation, Constitution and Governmental Principle course, 12 classes. Moorish Treaty Protection and Consular Relations course 101. Moorish Treaty Protection and Consular Relations course 201. Upcoming study books to supplementing the recorded courses. Treaty enforcement and international law study book, consular notification study book, central authority study book, riddle quanto study book, letter of letter of rocketory study book, Moorish body politic study book. Where Whoever defines the language controls the issue. The basic tool for the manipulation of reality is the manipulation. Uh, these are two different quotes. Let me clear. Right? These are two different quotes. Whoever defines the language controls the issue. This quote I heard in 2007 when I was in Hampton, uh, uh, Hampton Virginia. I was watching the um, um, Murray's, I think Murray's show. And it's talking about the Iliad case, the Cuban boy, you know, and the father was trying to get the Cuban the son back to Cuba. And um, Murray said that because the issue was dealt with language, the case was dealt with surrounded by language. So the Murray had said, who had whoever defines the language controls the issue. All right. So these are two separate quotes. All right. I'll have to put his name there. The basic tool for the manipulation of reality is the manipulation of words. If you can control the meaning of words, you can control the people who must use the words. Philip K. Dick. Session four, days March 24, 1st, 2024. Proving the claims to disprove the misconception taught claims taught by conscious Moors for several decades, part two. The history and politics surrounding the Northwest Territory and the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, from France to England slash Great Britain to Virginia Colony to the Virginia State to the United States and Concord Assemble, the settlement of huge land disputes of the 13 original colonies over a vast portion of Moorish land. Keep that in mind. Let me read this again. The history of politics surrounding the Northwest Territory and the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, from France to England, slash Great Britain, to Virginia Colony, to Virginia State, to the United States and Congress Assembly, the, the settlement of huge land disputes of the 13 original states 
over a vast portion of Moorish land, a huge issue surrounding the United States Constitutional Convention of 1787, settling major land disputes over Moorish land among the 13 original states and shaping the structure for future states to enter the Union. The 1763 Royal Proclamation, Article 2 of the 1783 of the 1783 Definitive Peace Treaty between Great Britain and the United States and the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. All right, this is the way I put the subtitles are very key in structuring, you know, giving the proper structure you know, to the presentation. Session five, August 4th, April 4th, 2024, proving the claims to disprove the misconception claims taught by conscious Moors for several decades, part three, the history and jurisprudence of article six of the United States constitution. Claim one, the foundational authority of each of the 13 states to operate its political body and authority as a state in the surveyed boundaries written in the in each of the 13 English British charters is derived from the conquest sovereign power of English British um, relinquish grant relinquish granted to each of the states through Article I of the 1783 Definitive Peace Treaty between Great Britain and United States. The title, the conquest title, the conquest title is in the charters, the 13 English charters along the Atlantic Sea Coast are the conquest titles. It's not, it's not, I'm, qualifying, so I'm saying conquest titles. It's not the actual or loyal title to land, it's the conquest title. So no deed, no deed issued by any state no deed issued by any state supersedes the conquest title. We talk about the conquest, on the conquest. So the the conquest title that's in the that's in the thirteen colony charters because you have the name, the name, New Jersey, the name is what patent in the New Jersey Colony Charter. Georgia, that name is patent in the Georgia Colony Charter and the boundaries. That's the title. That's the conquesting title. The actual charter is the conquesting title. And Article One, the each of the 13 states assume rights under the charters through Article One. All right? Claim two, the personal rights. You start spitting like this, you will get the respect. You start spitting like this, you're going to be teaching Europeans. You spit like this, you will be teaching Europeans. You'll be teaching European governors, you know, senators, judges. You'll be teaching them. You'll become their teachers. They don't know it. These governors, these state senators and stuff, they don't know it like this. This is not something they study. Now, if you're talking about Supreme Court judges, then that's different. You won't be schooling them. But if you're talking governor, state senator, federal senator, federal congress, you'll be schooling them. You'll become their teachers. Because it's not something they study, you know what I mean? It's not something they're dealing with, you know. But yet, I mean, that's not something they have a knowledge base of. But this is the foundation. Let me qualify that. They don't have a knowledge of this. The Supreme Court judges do, justices do. But this is not, this is something, this is a foundation in which they're standing upon. So make that very clear. Claim two, the personal rights, grants, time, towns, religious societies, educational institutions granted to the Spanish subjects by the Spanish crown to the French subjects by the French crown and to the English British subjects by the English British crown during the 15, 16 and 1700s 
are protected by the treaties with the United States under Article 3, Section 2, and Article 6 of the United States Constitution. So that, by its construction, that Constitution is the maintenance of the interests of the conquesting and colonizing interests of Spain, France, the Dutch. So how is that our Constitution? Like, why would you, all right, so that, all right, that's our Constitution, I got you. That means you're supporting this then. If you push that that United States Constitution dollars, you're for this. You're for the you're for the maintenance of conquest over your own people and over our own land. That means you for the continuation to push the United States Constitution. You're for the continuation of European conquest and colonization over our people, over the subjugation. All right. I know this is a different, I know it, I know. I know I'm presenting information, evidence. I know we have not been focused to look at it this way. I'm very clear on that. I'm very clear. I am challenging misconceptions that have been out there for over a hundred years. I know what I'm doing, but in order for us to rise, as I said before, 25 years, my growth was in my growth and development was inhibited for 25 years. So in order for us to rise, for us to expand, to grow, to develop, we must challenge and cannot be afraid to challenge the misconceptions. But you have to challenge the misconception with solid documentary evidence. I'm not afraid to challenge the misconceptions. Remember, I got 30, this is my 31st year. So I talked about that two weeks ago. We go on, go ahead, Terrence. All right, um, before, before I continue, there will be, there will not be any questions, no Q&A session. There's no Q&A session. Post your questions in the telegram group i'll answer them over the over the weekend there's no q a session Tam, we must end at nine o'clock Tams has to get up and go to work the next tomorrow so we're ending at nine there's no q a session i do need the time do the new this time to go through this the presentation all right so i've already stated it i've already stated it Quick, quick question. They're not like no, that. No, 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 saying, no, 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 no questions. No questions. No, I'm saying no questions. it's not that kind of question. Uh, Ronald Jones okay. want to know, can he have the link to come in the study group? I, I emailed it to him. I texted it to him. Okay, so I, I can't send it Ron to him, though. I, 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 text, I texted to Ronald Jones at uh, 30 minutes ago. Okay, so but I can't send I it over to him. Yeah, please do. Send it to him. Yeah, Ronald, yeah, just okay. text it again. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I did, I did text it to him. Okay. I got his number. Hey, send it again. No problem. Yes. I mean, you want to send it the first time. I already sent it. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I'm sorry, Quasi. Go ahead. That was. All right. Uh, session of six. Uh, April, April 18th. Developing jurisdictional competency among the Moors through the analysis of jurisdictional incompetency. What can a Moor accomplish individually outside the Moors treaties to help the millions of conscious and unconscious Moors. Does the juris judicial power of Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution extend to Moors' cases? Does Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution extend to capitulatory, extraterritoriality, extraterritorial consular jurisdiction, and foreign consular, juris consular courts established through treaties? That's, those are terms that we have to learn how, learn how to pronounce. That's capitulatory, extraterritoriality, extraterritorial consular jurisdiction, and foreign consular courts established through treaties. Does the United States and the United States Constitution have jurisdiction over our pre existing more sovereignty, more treaties, more treaty protection of the 15, 16, 17 and 1800s, pre existing compensatory, extraterritorial, extraterritoriality, 
extraterritorial consular jurisdiction, pre-existing Moorish diplomatic relations, pre-existing Moorish consular authority, pre-existing Moorish consular court, court jurisdiction. Notice I'm saying, I'm emphasizing the word pre-existing. Pre-existing. All right. Session 7, May 20, May 7, May, you know, because people wanted me to, students, y'all wanted me to do this. Least list all the dates. May Session 7, May 2nd. Session 8, June 6th. Session 9, June 20th. Session 10, July 4th. Session 11, July 18th. Session 12, August 1st, session 13, August 15th. All right, there will not be a session on the week, during the week of the conference. There will not be a session during the week of the conference, though that is the third week, all right? That, that's the third Wednesday, there, or uh, there will not, or Thursday, there will not be a session during the week of the conference. Some classes on the Moroccan Post Media YouTube page, refugee to be or not to be, Jurisdictional incompetence, points of analysis, first 15 minutes, a brother in Michigan, a brother in Michigan, a, a jurisdictional competency, points of analysis, 15 minutes, a brother in Michigan, jurisdiction. Excerpt from Moorish Body Politic Formation Meeting, June 2nd, 2021. 21. It's, it is not about jurisdiction, it's about the contract. All right, we won't read that. Go ahead, Terrence, and move on. All right, Moorish Body Politic Formation, 12 classes, Moorish Treaty Enforcement through diplomatic channels. The United States Central Authority, Part 1 and Part 2, Sir Malachi Bay, discuss... Samara Kabe discusses the enforcement of Moorish treaties in the United States jurisdiction through central authority of the United States. Legislation to enforce treaties and international law. It's important that I that I, that I just market the, our previous classes and courses. So it has to encourage you to let other people know. So if I go, so it's important that we that I do this. Because these are the, these previous classes that we courses that we have on the Moroccan Post Media YouTube page are very valuable and will help facilitate your growth and development. The United, the United States courts have lawful authority to hear Moorish cases, part one, part two, or part three, episode 12, extraterritorial consular jurisdiction. All right, here we go. Session four, today's session. All right. Pro proving the, the claims to disprove the misconceptions, uh, misconception claims taught by conscious Moors for several decades Part two, I'll read this again. The history and politics surrounding the Northwest Territory and the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 from France to England, Great, that's Great Britain, to Virginia Colony, to Virginia State, to United States and Congress Assembly. The, the settlement of huge land disputes of the 13 original states over a vast portion of Moorish land. Well, you, what you'll see, all right, as we continue to move forward with this, let's put the focus on land. What is there? What's the focus? Land. How is this our constitution? They set up shop, United States, United States. So it, then you, it's not, and then our inst inst instrument, United States Constitution, to maintain the interests of the Spanish land grants, French land grants, and letters of patent. They, they by its construction, by the very construction of the United States Constitution, by the very construction of the United States. When you 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 can't come to this understanding as you just open the United States Constitution and start from there. You can't come to this understanding if you go, you can read Article 6 a million times. You can read Article 6. Like an attorney, you're going to read Article 6 like an attorney a million times. You're not going to read it like a jurist because a jurist doesn't start there. A jurist does what they do, what I'm doing. 
That's why I said the history and Jewish prudence of Article 6. They don't do that in law school. All right. A major issue surrounding the United States Constitutional Convention of 1787. Settling, settling major land disputes. Keep that in mind. I'll keep referencing that about maybe 20 times over the next hour and 25 minutes. Settling major land disputes over Moorish lands among the 13 original states and shaping the structure for future states to enter the Union. Continue, Terrence. We prepare them to be jurists, bro. The 1763 Royal Proclamation, Article 2 of the 1783 Definitive Peace Treaty between Great Britain and the United States and the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. Article 1, can I have a reader? Can I have a reader? Article 1 of the 1783 Definitive Peace Treaty between Great Britain and the United States. The 13 English slash Britain colonies <clears throat> along the Atlantic sea coast, <clears throat> excuse me, his Britannic majesty acknowledges the said United States via Viz, New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island and Providence, plantations, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia to be free, sovereign and independent states that he treats with them as such for, and for him, his heirs and successors relinquishes all claims to the government properties and territorial rights are the same in every part thereof. All right. So maps showing the lands of his Britannic majesty on the conquest, English, British conquest, relinquished to the 13 original states through article, through the 1783 peace treaty. And that is the land along the Atlantic Sea coast, all right, known under con on the like that right, that was ex that is the expansion or extension of English British sovereignty through English British conquest and colonization of Moorish land, all right, the thirteen English colonies. You are. Uh, Do you want to show that? Yeah, put that map. Yes, Terrence. Yes. So we we're going to use the same map for the Royal Proclamation too. Line. All right. So since we already on this, uh, the next section section is the Royal Proclamation line. So you see there, in what's that? Pink, red, light red the 13 English colonies. That is that, those 13 English colonies uh, and you have the Dutch. The Dutch extended Dutch sovereignty on our land through Dutch conquest. In 1664, England took over from the Dutch. I mean, they took over from the Dutch in 1664. This is why Harlem, Harlem is a Dutch word. You know, New Amsterdam, they still have the Amsterdam News in Harlem. Amsterdam, that's Dutch. That's so you see the Dutch influence, even with the names. You know, Sturdevant, the Sturdevant Bridge, Peter Sturdevant, that's Dutch. So you see, even the names are kept. So English, England took over from the Dutch. The Dutch were great surveyors. So the Dutch did a heavy surveying and creation of maps. So they're this, they're using this foundation. And by not by conscious Moors not having Sister Alexandra Mu Il, she's one of the panelists for the conference. She called me today. And she said, uh, Abdullah, Sister Raisin is went over to London and got some information that showing that this is our land and, you know, what is your idea about, you know, uniting with 
those who claim to be Indians and those who claim to be Hebrew. And I said to her, I don't disagree with the proposal. I said, let's get conscious Moors act together. Let's raise the level of knowledge among conscious Moors so that we so that we are moving with strength. They see strength among conscious Moors. They see an aspect of political unity among conscious Moors. So that when we reach out, we're reaching out from a point of strength. So let's focus on getting our act together, i.e. the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law, law i.e. the Moroccan Post Media YouTube page, i.e. the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law Advanced Study Group class, i.e. the upcoming conference, May 18th conference, i.e. which the, the fly will be out with the name, the pictures of us, of the, the keynote speakers and panelists will be on the flyer this weekend. All right, that'll be available this weekend, early next week, uh, i.e. You know, so as I said, and also I'll be having, you know, the keynote speakers and panelists uh, on the Moorish, uh, uh, the Moorish Monday with Abdullah il Tunisi Bay on the Crystal Pyramid, Magnet Crystal Pyramid. That's every Monday from 7 p.m. to 8, 8 p.m. It's the standard time. So let's get our act together. I don't disagree, but let's get the conscious Moors. Let's raise the conscious Moors. We're doing that. We were, on, we were on Quasi's class last 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 night, all right? Or Kono's class, all right? By Sirius as its platform and others. So we, let's get our act together. We're doing it. We're getting our act together. Let's show strength among conscious Moors. All right, continue, Terrence. Moyo Proclamation of 1763 and the prohibiting and, pro, and the prohibiting ah, the Royal Proclamation of 1763. You hear me? Because I went off yeah. for all Not right. Clear. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 and the prohibiting of the English colonists from settling on Moorish lands that the French king ceded to England slash Great Britain in the 1763 peace treaty and the King George III of England slash Great Britain deemed as reserved land for the Moors classified as Indians. So you say that this is our constitution. I got you. Now you now you that's real now. So this royal put the royal park put that the image back up, Terrence. Okay. That the one you just had up. Yeah. See, so you see here this Royal Proclamation line. All right. So you have the Royal Proclamation line. So King George the Third issued the Royal Proclamation prohibiting the English settlers all that were inhabiting our land along the on, in the English colonies along the Atlantic Sea Coast. That Royal Proclamation line. See where it is prohibited them from going on to reserve land that King George III reserved in the Royal Formation. This issue here led to the Revolutionary War. This was a major issue. Now, just keep in mind, over what? Our land. So what? So major issue regarding land disputes of conquest land. Let's, I'm going to keep that in mind. Let's let that resonate. How is this our constitution? This, this regarding, so if you want to maintain conquest and colonization, push that constitution. I got, yeah, push it. How does that protect us? How is that constitution protecting us? Please, somebody help me. How is it protecting us? All right. Just follow me, y'all. Terrence, I come to your house. I knock the door down. I knock the door down. I hold you in captivity in your own house for 10 years. 
I draft an instrument. I bring in my buddies. You know what I mean? The you know, occupy the rooms. I put Terrence in the basement. So I bring my buddies in. All right. And we draft up an agreement called a constitution. We form a society, Abdullah Bay Society, and draft a constitution on how we're going if to deal with this this and house and any disputes. Any disputes settle, all right? And so this instrument is how we're going to handle disputes regarding, you know, this house here. Right? So how is this is that's what that's about. I continue, Terrence. So the, the Northwest Ordinance from France to England. So as I said before, Great Britain, France ceded what is known as the Northwest, what is now known as Michigan, Ohio, parts of Minnesota, uh, Illinois, Indiana, to Great Britain in the 1763 peace treaty between France and Great Britain. You're gonna, you're gonna see as we read article two, we're leading into article two, Great Britain, so the Virginia, Virginia colony in 1763, Virginia colony, colony made the claims to the land using through the 1607, the 1607 Virginia Colony, uh, uh, Virginia Company Charter. So Virginia Colony made the claims to the land in 16, and through the 1607 Virginia Colony Charter. This George Washington was a surveyor and part of a survey company in Virginia. So this, so this here, that that Northwest Ordinance, that no, that Northwest Territory is a major issue, you know, among the states. There, you know, as we read on, you'll see that there were six what they call smaller states who did not have a claim to expand westward. So that was a that was the issue with those smaller states in Rhode Island and Connecticut are two of the smaller states that did not have claims and they were they had a major issue with that for for fear that the other states would grow grow and have gained more representation. So this was a major issue over our land. And we're leading up now. We don't start with no 1774. You don't start reading that United States Constitution. You'll never come to this. So remember, the claim is that that's our, that United States Constitution is the Moorish Constitution. The claim is that we, the people of the United States, is the Moors. The claim is that Moors sovereignty is vested in the United States Constitution. The claim is that the Moors are the founders of the United States. The claim is that 35 Moors was at the United States Constitutional Convention in 17th from March of 1787 to September 1787. That's the claims. Now, I wanted you to keep those claims in mind. And we addressed those misconceptions last week, two weeks ago, and we're continuing with that. Keep those claims in mind. How can this be our Constitution? The claim is that more is a part and parcel, part and parcel of this said government and must live the life accordingly. So we got all, all these claims going on. That has inhibited our growth and development. We must face those claims head on with solid research and documentary evidence. All right, great, Terrence.
I will continue to go back and forth with that because that's you know with those claims. Let's let's think. Let's keep our keep our keep our thinking cap on. All right. This is excerpt of Article Two of the seventeen eighty three peace treaty. I have a reader. I mean, it was read two weeks ago. We we need to read it again in the context of this presentation. This is this is the land that we we talked about. About that, that's it's it's it, this is in Article Three now, Article Two. This the the transfer of the land is through the treaty between Great Britain and the United States, in Article Two, or what's now known as Michigan. All right, put the put that up, Terrence. The picture, Northwest Territory. Before we put before we go into the reading. Uh, give me one second. Hopefully, I have it up. Hopefully, I loaded it. Give me one second. If not, don't don't worry about it. We just go right into the reading. Yeah, yeah, just go ahead. We go right to the reading. If he, when you find it, you're, you're good. So go, somebody, we have a reader, please. Excerpt of Article Two of the 1783 Peace Treaty, and all, and that all disputes which might arise in future on the subject of the boundaries of the said United States may be prevented. It is hereby no, read, read, read that again, Amanda. Read that again. And that all disputes which might arise in future on the subject of the boundaries of the said United States may be prevented. It is hereby agreed and declared that the following are and shall be their boundaries, viz. from the northwest angle of Nova Scotia, viz. that angle which is formed by a line drawn due north from the source of St. Crow River to the highlands, along the said highlands which divide those rivers that empty themselves into the river St. Lawrence from those which fall into the Atlantic Ocean to the northwestern most head of the Connecticut River, thence sown along the middle of that river to the 45th degree of north latitude, from thence by a line due west on said latitude until it strikes the river Iroquois or Katarake, thence along the middle of said river into Lake Ontario, through the middle of said lake until it strikes the communication by water between that lake and Lake Erie, thence along the middle of said communication into Lake Erie, through the middle of said lake until it arrives at the water communication between that lake and Lake Huron, thence through the middle of said lake to the water communication between that lake and Lake Superior. And All right, so this is just excerpt. This is just half of the of the article. I, I, as I said before, I posted the, uh, the the definitive peace treaty between Great Britain and the United States, 1783, on the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law Telegram page, as well as for the Love of Moors Telegram page, as well as uh, Brother uh, Okono's uh, community page on his messenger. The, uh, can we have can we have someone read another reader? The Northwest Territory and the Kingdom France extension of French territorial sovereignty on Moorish land under French conquest, discovery, colonization. The Northwest Territory and the seventeen. 63 peace treaty between France and Great Britain. France see the Northwest Territory to Great Britain. The Northwest Territory and the Virginia Colony. The Northwest Territory and the 1783 definitive peace treaty between Great Britain and the United States. The Northwest Territory, the 1783 definitive peace treaty between Great Britain and the United States and Virginia State. Virginia claimed much of the territory based on a reading of the Virginia Colony Charter of 1607. Virginia state cedes the Northwest Territory to the federal government in 1784. I continue, my uh, series. The Northwest Ordinance provides a process for forming new states by Joerg Niprof. The domain relinquished by the Great Britain to the states under the Treaty of Paris of 1783 extended to the Mississippi River, well westward of the main area of settlement and even of the backcountry areas such as the Piedmont or the Piedmont regions of Virginia and the Carolinas. The, con 
the Confederation and its component states were land rich and cash poor. The answer would appear to be to open up this land for settlement by selling tracts to bona fide purchasers and to encourage immigration from Europeans. On right, July, so how, so this, so don't want to stop for a minute. Of I serious. So this is our constitution. This is what they're. This is they're protecting this interest with through that constitution. This is our constitution. All right, that you're pushing. You all right? Keep this in mind. You're pushing. That's our constitution. I got that. This is what you're pushing. You're pushing the maintenance of this. You're pushing the maintenance of this. As we read through this, keep. You're pushing the maintenance of what we're reading. You're pushing the maintenance. They're maintaining. They protect the interests through that constitution. They protect the interests of stolen land, our stolen land, how they deal with land disputes. Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution of states dealing with land disputes. They have a structure there. It's structured. The Northwest Ordinance. So we'll continue. I'll go more into the West North Ordinance. We'll, we'll, you'll, you'll see this become unveiling. Continue. On July 13, 1787, Congress enacts the Northwest Ordinance structuring settlement of the Northwest Territory and creating a policy for the addition of new states to the nation. The members of Congress knew that it's their new confeder if their new confederation were to survive intact, it had to resolve the state's competing claims to Western Territory. The principle behind the Northwest Ordinance was carried into the Constitution in Article 4, Section 4, which states, the United States shall guarantee to every state in the Union a Republican form of government. Read that one more again. The principle behind the Northwest Ordinance was carried into the Constitution in Article 4, Section 4, which states, the United States shall guarantee to every state in the union, in this union, a Republican form of government. All right, this is the Moore's Constitution. I got you. Go ahead. This is the Moore's <laughs> Constitution. No problem. Mm -hmm. Debate over the Northwest Territory was a key point at the United States Constitutional Convention in 1787. The Northwest Ordinance by 2024, Mount Vernon Ladies Association states, you, hold up, Northwest Ordinance by 2024, Mount Vernon Ladies Association. States use land bounties to uh, recruit men for military service during the revolution. The use of land bounties created additional conflict between because both individual states and the Continental Congress used them to fill the ranks of Continental forces. Without clear established authority and an equally clear process laying out the procedure of settling the frontier, the Northwest Territory will remain a bubbling cauldron of conflict between white settlers, squatters, speculators, and Native Americans seeking to asset their rights to frontier lands. The Northwest Ordinance established clear processes for acquiring, settling, and organizing Western lands while legitimizing the powers of the United States government. The ordinance solidified federal power early in the ratification era by establishing Congress as the only authority controlling territories held by the United States. Northwest Ordinance, Ordinances, United States, 1784, 1785, 1787, editors of Encyclopedia Britannica, the Ordinance of 1764, drafted by Thomas Jefferson. 84, and 80, 84, 84, 84. My bad, it's real small. The Ordinance of 1784, drafted by Thomas Jefferson and passed by Congress, April 23rd, 1784. Divided the territory into a handful of self-governing districts and stipulated that each district could send one representative to Congress upon its attaining a population of 20,000. And it will become eligible for statehood when its population equal that of the least populous existing state. This ordinance was superseded by the Ordinance of 1787. 
The ordinance of 1785 provided for the scientific surveying of the territory's lands and for a systematic subdivision of them. Land was to be subdivided according to rectangular grid, a rectangular grid system. The basic unit of land, the basic unit of land grant was the township, which was a square area measuring six miles on each side. A township could then be subdivided into a number of rectangular parcels of individually owned land. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787, the most important of the three acts, laid the basis for the government of the Northwest Territory and for the admission of its constituent parts as states into the Union. Under this ordinance, each district was to be governed by a governor and judges appointed by Congress until it attained a population of 5,000 adult free males, at which time it would become a territory and could form its own representative legislator. The Northwest Territory must eventually comprise a minimum of three and a maximum of five states. An individual territory could be admitted to statehood in the Union after having attained a population of 60,000. Under this ordinance, the principle of granting new states equal rather than inferior status to older ones was firmly established. The Articles of Confederation and Western Expansion by Richard J. Werther, the debates over Moorish Western lands under the Articles of Confederation continued European conquest and colonization, Western holdings, 230 million acres, over 60% of the total Western acreage claimed by the seven states. As one may imagine, from understanding the later debates on the Constitution in 1787, there were a number of points of contention on the articles that were later re-argued for the Constitution. But there was one issue in the debate on the articles that would ultimately play a significant role in the way the United States coalesced and grew. It did not have to be re-litigated when the Constitution was debated. The issue was the disposition of the continent's Western lands, those lands beyond the recognized borders of the British colonies, who would own them and how would they be managed. Despite all their failures, the settlements of the Western land question would become the most enduring contribution of the Articles of the Confederation. This brings us to our main event, the debates over Western land holdings. This is where things bogged down, at least for one state. The new lands acquired in the 1783 Treaty of Paris, the 1783 def Definitive Peace Treaty between Great Britain and the United States, it represented a vast territory stretching from the Appalachian Mountains to the Mississippi River between the southern shores of the Great Lakes and Spanish Florida. To whom did these lands belong? Initially, seven states claimed them based on old colonial grants and Indian treaties. Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. These states supported this stance by claiming that the state of war with Britain meant that their borders reverted to those specified by their original colonial charters. Which were, expans which were expansive, although still limited by the proclamation line of 1763, which limited expansion to the Appalachians. Many of these states' claims were overlapping. The other six states had no claims beyond their existing boundaries. Termed landless states, they feared that the other states enlarged by Western territories would become economically and politically dominant. In the initial comment period for the articles, Maryland, one of the landless six, proposed the following change to Article 9. The United States and Congress assembled shall have the power to appoint commissioners who shall be fully authorized to ascertain and restrict the boundaries of such confederated states which claim to extend to the River Mississippi 
or the South Sea. This amendment was deferred and then voted down. So, so started Maryland's battle. Samuel Chase. Let's that, 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 that stop there for a minute. Now, you see how they're, as they're drafting the Constitution, they're, these issues are being, what, settled in the drafting? Now, the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, there was a smaller committee that met outside of the Constitutional Convention because that was a major contention. Like I said, those six states were threatening to walk out of the Constitutional Convention. How is this our Constitution? Those six smaller states were threatening to walk out of the Constitutional Convention. So they, there was a committee that met outside so this in August of 17, July of 1787, all right, during the time period of the Constitutional Convention, the Northwest Ordinance, that that dispute was settled through the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. But they had laid, Thomas Jefferson had laid the blueprint in the Ordinance of 1784, further expanded in the Ordinance of 1785, and finally settled in the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. So once that smaller group committee meeting outside of the Constitutional Convention drafted and the, the Northwest Ordinance and the United States and Congress assembled, ratified it, all right, so that be, so they were able to move forward in the Constitutional Convention. Remember, this is over what? Conquest and colonizing land, Moorish land. How is this our constitution? Let me knock those 35 moors in the head. Where they at? Where's the 35 moors about that constitutional convention? Let me knock them in the head. Can I knock them in the head? They, why, why they didn't stand up? Where's the 35 moors that they didn't stand up? It's about our land, you, you know? Why these 35 moors let this go? Where's the 35 moors that that was at the constitutional convention? Why they, this is, I, I'm, just, I'm just being facetious all just to get us to think. We must raise the level. We must, in order for us, this is this, this is a serious matter we're dealing with. And we were not ill-equipped. We were not equipped. We were not educationally equipped to address European conquest and colonization of our land. We were not. I was not. I was thinking about the day of a new etymology, grammar. Vocabulary building, dictionary study skills. I mean, I've looked at, researched all these treaties, 1998, all these letters in 98 and 1999 and 2000. It's like, what did I know though? What did I really know? Like, how much did I really know? How much did I really gain in knowledge in 25 years prior to studying with Shin Malachi Bay that? was strong enough to really address the European conquest and colonization of land. How much did I really know? I'm just looking at the, analyzing the amount of studying Terrence can bear witness. The amount of studying over the past five years since working with Shim. Like, wow, I was behind. Man, I was behind. I wasn't on this level that we're reading right now. I was not on this level, y'all. All right, we have another reader. Good job, of our series. Another reader. Sessions of land from each state from 1781 to 1802. Farley Grubb, National Bureau of Economic Research. Between 1780 and 1787, Congress affirmed its authority over the ceded lands and established the basic principles and policies of land distributed and governance for decades to come. This was accomplished by the passage of three great ordinances, the Ordinance of 1784, the Ordinance of 1785, and the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. The first initiated under Thomas Jefferson and then fleshed out and carried forward by others in Congress with the 1785 and 1787 ordinances superseding 
the 1784 ordinance. State land claims and sessions to the federal government, 1782 through 1802. Matt. I continue, continue. How did the Confederation government deal with the problem of Western lands? The Northwest Ordinance of 1787. One of the most significant pieces of legislation in United States history was created by the Continental Congress in 1787, prior to the ratification of the Constitution is the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. So that would be one of the most significant pieces of legislation. It was adopted more or less without revision by the first Congress in 1790. It spelled out things like how the surveys were to be performed, what it took to create a town and eventually new states, what the role of the federal government was to be in the unsettled lands and so, and so on. The Continental Congress created a law that governed the Western settlement, defined then as anything west of the Ohio River at the edge of Pennsylvania. And this governed everything that happened later, including the settlement of Louisiana territory and the rest of it all. The Northwest Ordinance, along with the Land Ordinance of 1784 and 1785, set up the structure for the orderly addition of the United, excuse me, the Northwest Ordinance, along with the land ordinances of 1784 and 1785, set up the structure for the orderly addition of states to the Union. What is the history behind Article 4, Section 3, Paragraph 2 of the United States Constitution? At the Constitutional Convention, delegates approve Article 4, Section 3, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution, which states, the Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. So was the Articles of the Confederation, so was the Articles of Confederation a major failure? It has been known as. Well, maybe. But what was achieved here was worth the price of admission, so to speak. It set the stage for an orderly growth of the American Republic and ultimately secured the achievement of its destiny. This is the Moorish Constitution, y'all. This is the Moorish Constitution. Justia. Controversies between citizens of the same state claiming land under grants of different states. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787 made the clause obsolete. Article three, section two, clause one. The judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under the constitution. The genesis of this clause was in the report of the committee of detail which vested the power to resolve such land disputes in the Senate. But this proposal was defeated in the convention, the United States Constitutional Convention of 1787, which then added this clause to the jurisdiction of the federal judiciary without reported debate. The motivation for this clause was the extents of boundary, excuse me, was the extents existence of boundary disputes affecting 10 states at the time the convention met. With the adoption of the Northwest Ordinance in 1787, the ultimate settlement of boundary disputes and the passing of land grants by the states, this clause never productive of many cases became obsolete. See how Clauses, articles, and clauses are being are being drafted based on what though? How they're protecting their interests? How their interests of the spoil spoil awards are being protected? You know how that how interests are even protecting interests of the predecessor European occupying powers? It's all structured there in that constitution with even Article Six, you know, treaties with the Great Britain, 1783. So how is this, by its construction, I made the claim, I'm supporting it, y'all. 
by its construction. You're saying it by its construction. That's why we, that's, so you don't have to say Abdullah said anything. This Abdullah said by its construction. It maintains European conquest and colonization of our land. Why would we want, how is that protecting? They took the land. Where's the, all right, all right, no problem. That's our constitution. So where in that constitution is the land being restored to us? Let me, let me go through it. That's being restored to us. Because this is how they're managing it. They're managing it through that constitution. They're managing our stolen land through that constitution. They're protecting the interests of Spanish land grants, French land grants, letters of patent, the Dungan patent, Nichols patent, William Penn Charter. They're protecting the interests of that. A house by its construction, they're managing using that United States Constitution, and that, that is to manage the stolen wealth of our land. How is that our constitution? Like, how can we move forward making the claim that Moorish sovereignty is vested in that United States Constitution? That we, the people of the United States, are the Moors. This means Moorish sovereignty is vested in the United States Constitution. Meaning the Moorish nationality and Moorish sovereignty, because you talk Moorish nationality, you're talking Moorish sovereignty, the part and parcel. Moorish nationality and Moorish sovereignty is part and parcel. They're part and parcel. All right? So Moorish nationality is vested in the United States Constitution. Moorish sovereignty. Moorish sovereign authority. The Moorish authority to establish Moorish, Moorish embassies in China is vested in the United States Constitution. Moorish embassies in France, Nigeria, Germany, it's vested in the United States Constitution. Moorish authority, sovereign authority to establish, to negotiate treaties with France and England and Germany, China, Japan, Mexico, New Nigeria, South Africa, is vested in the United States Constitution. See how I'm coming, y'all? It wasn't, conscious Moors weren't taught from this perspective. I continue. I have, I have a question, uh, brother. No, um, no, 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 no questions. No questions, brother. No questions. I can't open it up for questions because once, once I at, once I open it up for you, then I have to open it up for everybody. I I, I have what I can I can I cannot open up for you. Then I open up for everybody else. That that would be unfair. Settlers, bureaucrats, and private land claims. The little. Arendondo Grant by Edward F. Kewichel and Joe Nitsch. In his History of the United States Land Policy, historian Paul W. Gates wrote, no problem caused Congress, officials of the General Land Office and federal courts more difficulty or took up as much as the private land claims that is the grants of land made by predecessor governments in areas acquired from Great Britain, France, Spain, Mexico, and in the Oregon country by agreement with Great Britain. There was also problems in Florida since land had- You can stop there. I stopped there for that, that, that that's for that. Yeah. For read for this reading, this part of this reading. We go to the next slide, Terrence. Um, I think that was which other slide? Because this was it for here. And yeah, I'm talking about the go back to the, the what I emailed you. That was go back to what in the what? What I say end? That was the end. Oh, well, question and answer, y'all. I'm open <laughs> up a question QA. I didn't know. T, I'm, you know, I'm, yep, you know, I didn't, all right. So, you know, we got, we can open up for QA. I just wanted, I wanted to get through this. That's all I didn't right. want. I wanted to get through this. We got time now for QA. 
which so is great. Brother that had a question, um, had his hand raised. He can. Uh, All right. Okay. Yeah. Come on in. Here you go. Okay. Um, when you're mentioning uh, stolen lands, right? Now, I'm not challenging you or anybody. I want to deeper can, understand. You can challenge me, brother. You can challenge no, no, me. No, no, I'm, no. I'm, I want to establish that before I even ask the question. I'm not challenging. I'm really seeking to understand this on that level that you're explaining it. When you're saying stolen lands, is that not our silence giving consent? And if it is, does that mean that it's stolen lands or are we consensual and complicit in that? That's my question. All right. All right, so let's 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 go back. All right. So we have I'm going to start with the I'm going to start with the uh 1085. Let's go back to 1085. Not off the question. I'm on you. All right. Just okay. want to place so you can understand this. Completely. Perfect. Right? Perfect. Great. All right. Great. We're going to start with 1085. Okay. The European powers launched the crusades against the Moors in 1085. Okay. The European powers united their forces against the Moors. Uh, they established night orders, the Knights of Hospitaller, the Knights of St. John's Hospitaller. Hospital, the word hospital is a part of the name of a night order, the hospital. Hospitaller, the sovereign order of St. John's of Hospitaller that was established in, in uh, 10, uh, 1085. And you have all the knight orders, the Knights of Calatrava, you know, established by Argon and Castile. So they, they launched the knight, these orders, they united their powers against us. And so in 10, 10 by uh, 10 by 1235, the last Moorish stronghold that stood in Europe was Granada. So from 1235, to 1492, 1491, November, November 25th, 1491, the last, that was the period of time that the last boy stronghold stood. The, the Treaty of Granada, that Abu, Abu Muhammad surrendered the Moorish sovereignty of the land to Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. Queen Isabella, King for King, Queen Isabella of Argon, and Fernand, King Fernand of or, or, no King Fernand of Argon, Queen Isabella of Castile, married in 1463 in November, uniting their kingdoms to strengthen that power to bring down that uh, bring us down that last the end Moorish power and rulership in Europe. But the treaty in the, the treaty in Granada does not does not remove. So, so the Abu Muhammad surrendering more sovereignty of land to Queen Isabella and King Fernand did not remove the personal rights, the more personal rights in the Treaty of Granada, signed on November 21st, the 25th, 1491. It preserves put the, put the personal rights of the Moors. One of the articles in the treaty, it has the extraterritoriality. Extraterritoriality clause is in there, where Moors will be governed under Moorish Moorish law. All right, so it's this is Islamic law, right in that treaty. So that's extraterritoriality. What's the issue? Fifteen sixty three, Philip II of Spain, putting Moors under subjugation of Spain, classified the Moors as Spaniards. That was the first act of denationalizing the Moors, whereby the Moors were classified as Spanish, an act of denationalization. So if you look, look at the process, the war and defeat, that's not an acquiescence. It's a conquest. That's why I had to go get there. It's a conquest. A conquest is not acquiescent. Like we didn't hand nothing over like that. It, it's through conquest and defeat. So we guess we maintain 
you know, sea power during the 15, 16, 1700, yes, but gradually losing power. And I, we talked about that gradual loss in 16, the 16, 1631 treaty between France and Morocco. You see the, the, the power of Morocco in that 1731 treaty between France and, and Morocco, the Empire of Morocco, whereby the French had to pay us to a tremendous amount of concession, you know, contribute. But in the 1760, 1767 treaty between Morocco and France, France had gained a great deal of concession to the point where the French merchants, where uh, uh, Mohammed Ibn Abdullah appointed a French merchant, Stephen de Olibot, to represent unrepresented nations. So that gave the United States a foothold, all right, by through the French merchant. And so the that this is why United this is why Muhammad Ibn Abdullah recognized the United States in 1777 by by virtue of uh, the French merchant Stephen de Altabot. Stephen de Altabot was instrumental. It was that treaty between United Morocco and France in 1767. So he's talking about a gradual loss of power through defeat, conquest, war, battle. All right. Right. So 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 if and and I'm up up in the, in that along with that is you, you, the, you have is that another with that brother that says you have your no, brother. No, no, this, next, this, no, this, hold this, on, brother. Let's move on. No, brother. Let's move on to another question. Somebody else. That's the brother. Just be in all fairness, brother. Please. In all, in all the, reason, the reason. The reason why. Brother, I'm please, 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 brother. Please, please. And you in can also put your, your questions in the uh, Telegram as well. All right. And then yeah, we'll all, answer them. Yes. Um, yes. Over the, over the weekend, um, I did see um, Mayana. We'll go to the next one. Yes. Um, with I just want to be fair, though. Question? I don't want to give, yeah, because I can't spend too much time with one person, so I got to be fair. But um, I do have a question. So I went through the process with sending my paperwork in with a, a, a proclamation. I'm just curious, what would you recommend my next step of like doing like, or studying? What should be my next step after getting my name changed? All right. Now, I want y'all to hear her. She said, I, she didn't say a Moorish consul. Just hear her now. I just want you to hear what she said. She said, I, she didn't say a Moorish consul. She didn't say, I being represented by a Moorish consul through Moorish government structure. Oh. She said, I in the, was in the process of getting my sending to a foreign government. I mean, of course, because a foreign government, she was, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, United States. So she is communicating with a foreign government, United States. On her own, she said, I, not through government structure, not through national principles, not through diplomatic channels, not through a Moorish consul. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to pay attention. This is, all right, this is, I want y'all to pay attention because this is how conscious Moors are been taught forever. Because they has not, had, had not, until Shem Malachi Bay, it had not been an emphasis on diplomatic channels, on, on national political unity, or Moorish political government structure. So you're going to get people to just be like, I, I was the same way, sister. All right, you're going to get sin from your own personal address, sin from your own personal address to the seven departments, sin to a foreign government, sin to the department of a foreign government, United States, your proclamation from your mm -hmm. own personal address, not from a whereby a Moorish consul, all right, through diplomatic channels, all right, it's not done, it's your personal. I just want to pay pay attention. This is key now. She said, I. She didn't say Moorish consul. We have to come yeah, to that. To no, no, hear me, okay. hear me out. I'm making a point where we have to rise to. Sister. Hear me out, please. I got 31 years. I've gotten over, I've, I filled over 200 calls in a 10 year period. My number was on RV Bay. 
My phone number was on rvbaypublications.com. That's why people called me from all over the country. I fielded over 200 calls like you. And they said, Abdullah, this sugar honey iced tea doesn't work. I got the Moorish paperwork. My job is not accepting it. You know, what do I do, Abdullah? Over 200 calls. Abdullah, man, man, you don't, my, you're the only one that answered the calls. Man, I'm calling other people and, man, I got your number off of RV Bay and, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be honest, y'all. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to BS y'all. All right? So you have this new more energy. I've seen the new more energy for almost, this is my 31st year. I've seen thousands of new more energy. It only lasts for three seconds. The new more energy only lasts for three seconds. Once they get there, what they call proclamation and quote unquote name change and you know, so forth. And, and then they try to execute it at their job or whatever you see in the sin. It doesn't work and F this stuff and this stuff ain't sugar, honey, iced tea. All right. I've been, I've seen thousands, thousands of conscious mores go through that. There's been a turnstile in this movement. There's been a turnstile of thousands of conscious mores. They were, came, they were unconscious, they came conscious, and they're no longer active. Thousands. When I connected with Shim, when I started work, I've known Shim for 20 years. I had never worked with him until all April 2019. I brought this up to Shim. Shim, I brought what I'm saying now up to Shim, Malachi Bay. I said, Shim, what do we do different? Because if I heard the same thing, I would have walked away from Shim. If I heard the same thing, I would have walked away from Shim. So Shim put a heavy emphasis on government structure, diplomatic channels. So I heard a different ring. If I heard the same thing, I would have walked away from Shem. But I didn't hear the same thing. Shem is the only one, the only more, conscious or unconscious, of the millions of Moors. I said this to Shem today. We're sitting in his kitchen, his mother's house. I said, Shem, you're the only more, conscious or unconscious, are the millions of these of Moors, conscious or unconscious, that have a proper understanding of this movement. Thanks to you, you're not the only one now, Shem. Thanks to you, you're not the only one, Shem. Thanks to you. So I'm gonna move on to the next one, but I want you to, government structure, sister, be, stay with us. I will. Thank you so much. I had dropped out of school and everything for this. So, yeah, I'm um, always to invest in into becoming a full more and like living in my trip and teaching each one, teach one for sure. So you, so you want to, so you want to, so I'm gonna ask you a question. Are mm -hmm. you seeking to become a teacher? I have your like you seeking to become like a quasi at a corner. I am. I a am. Although I do, a quasi has a study group. Our Kono yeah. has their own study group. Are you want? Do you want to do that? Do you want to be like a quasi, a brother Kono, a brother by Sirius, who have their own platforms, who've been studying with us for a while, and they've got to the knowledge of, you know, having their own platform. Are you? Do you want to be like them, having your own platform, teaching? I do. I, although I want to keep a lot of myself about more information like this and going through a proclamation and actually living in like my truth, challenge, challenging the jurisdictions and stuff like that. I want to actually like live in this and then versus like, okay, I got this information. I'm not actually like doing anything with it. I do want to continue my education with, with in a more system or like not even All a right. system, just like off the plantation, more to say. All right. So make sure she has the link to the Telegram page. Make sure she has the invite link. Someone send her the invite link to the Moroccan Post, um, somebody get her number so we can you make sure you have the invite link for we have the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law Telegram page. 
you know, but uh, all right. So we definitely want to, you know, if we can connect you. I'm gonna con connect you with Sister Bacola. Uh, Sister okay. Bacola. So Sister Bacola's on now. Uh, Sister Bacola, uh, get this sister's number. All right. Um, um Sister Bacola. Just, just, uh, Sister, drop your uh your your number in the chat. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll handle uh, so it from Bacola there. Just dropped off. Um, uh, thank you so much, she's still on, she's still on. Number in the chat, and uh, we make sure if that Sister Bacola gets your information. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to uh, Sister uh, Deanny. You have your hand raised. Yes, I am ready. All right, All right. Islam. Islam. Um, my question is 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 going to be strange because during this colonization and conquest of the Moors by pretty much the world, what role did the women play? What role did the sisters play? I hear Queen this and Queen that, but how many of those were Moors or more by the system. Or did go we to uh, first? I go look up the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee Constitution, the Haudenosaunee Constitution, known as also known as the Iroquois Constitution. Read Articles Forty Four. I'm going to direct you to references. Read Articles Forty Four. The Articles in Articles Forty Four through Articles Fifty Four. Mm -hmm. That gives you the answer. You answer. Get, I'm giving that. I'm guiding you to the answer to your question. Uh, the Iroquois Constitution, Articles 44 through Articles 54. Read that. That's the answer to your question. Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, Sister Pecola, Kusar Il will be. My guest on Moorish Monday with Abdullah Il Talimosi Bay on the Magnet Crystal Pyramid platform mon next Monday, this coming Monday, May 25th from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. She's one of the keynote speakers of the Moorish Government Birthright Nationality Claim Conference, May 18th. I will be having the various, I have August 15th, on April 15th, Nakin Bay, on, uh, uh, al Kanan and Raymond, they're all a part of Masonic orders. They will be on Moorish Monday on eight, August 15th. I have uh, I have a lineup, I have uh, uh, Viserius. Viserius will be on Moorish Monday on April 8th. And I have, I'm still building the lineup up, all right? So the Pocola's title will deal with the ancient matriarchal principle. All right, so she's my guest on Moorish Monday, this coming uh, Monday, May 18th, May 20, uh, April 20, uh, March 25th. Our next question. We got time for questions now. We got right, I want to give, 30, I wanna give people minutes. a fair. I want to be fair, though. I want to give people a chance. You know, I don't can't want to answer two or three questions with one person in like you know, in succession like that. All right, because because um because uh, that would be, and and it would be fair. It would be fair for y'all to call me, or email me and say Abdullah, you were unfair by answering to three successive questions from the same person, Abdullah, that's unfair. I not, you know, cause I have gotten that. And I have, and, and I, and, and that I, so I'm taking heed to that. So I know not to do that. Islam, Mia Moore Bay from uh, Michigan territory. Islam, brother Abdullah. Islam, sister. Uh, my question is, like tonight, I noticed we, we went over the Paris Peace Treaty of 1786. So I also noticed that we have the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Uh, 83, the, 80, 83, sister. Yeah, I'm, I'm 83. sorry. All right, 1783. No, no I'm sorry. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I also noticed the Treaty of Peace and uh, the the Treaty of of uh, Peace and Friendship with the Moroccan Empire and the Moorish American. Can you please? Uh, elaborate and explain the difference between the two treaties? All right. Well, let's look at the parties. You first, if you're talking difference, you first you first look at the parties now. So the mm -hmm. parties, the, the treaty between Great Britain, the 1783 definitive peace treaty between Great Britain and the United States. So you have the parties. That's the party. Those are parties to that treaty. Yeah, the parties the are treaty. different. 
the party is different, so let's look at outline the differences. So that's one mm -hmm. of the parties. All right. Um, you look at the 1783 Definitive Peace Treaty between Great Britain and United States, Article One, and Article Two of that treaty are where Great Britain is pretending that it's relinquishing, relinquishing land. So there's a relinquishing of land. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's so an article and the, the treaty between Great Morocco and the United States, the treaty, the, the, the treaty be uh, the treaty of peace and friendship of 1787, there's no relinquishing of land. All right. Another difference mm -hmm. is that there's an extraterritoriality clause. All right, this is a great question. The extraterritoriality mm -hmm. clause in the 1787 treaty between Great Britain, I mean, between not, uh, Morocco and the United States, all right? In the treaty between Great Britain and the United States, 1783, there's no extraterritoriality clause, which means Article 3, but there, Article 3 of the United States, Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution is the clause that deal with disputes regarding the treaty, regarding, you know, Regarding those British subjects, those loyalists, those who remain loyal to the crown, all right, and citizens of the United States. That's Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. In the treaty between Great Britain and between the United States and Morocco, Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution does not apply. Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution does not apply. Why? Because there's four extraterritoriality clauses, Articles 20 of 5, Articles 20 to Article 25. So there's no, so that's Article, Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. This does not extend to extraterritoriality. All right. So extraterritoriality clause, you know, established by treaty. All right. Uh, so there's no uh, article, article. There's no constitution in the world. No constitution in the world has an extraterritoriality whereby that uh, whereby the treaty between France and Great Britain, Great Britain, does not have the authority to draft in their constitution a French extraterritoriality clause. Like uh, Great Britain does not have authorities to uh, draft in their constitution. Uh, when we're in France, all right, we're gonna be governed by British law and not French law. No, that's done, that's negotiated between both parties, the treaty. All right, so those are the, those are, those are the differences. Islam, thank right. you for that. Yep. All right. You're, you're welcome. Next, next question. And neither does the Constitution establish consular courts. Yes. And that's one of that's still with a misconception, a misconception that's been taught that Moorish consular Article 3, Moorish consular courts are established by Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. Hear me this is, let's, let's see, let's, we gotta, we have to rise in knowledge, y'all. Constant courts are established by treaties. Misconception, Moorish consular courts are established through Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. You don't have to say Abdullah said, said anything. Research it yourself. And that's Research. a misconception. But you don't want it, you don't need to say Abdullah said anything though. Research, look up how consular courts are established. Just look it up. Established by treaties. Not Abdullah said. It's not Abdullah said. It ain't based on what Abdullah said. So don't say Abdullah said. You don't need to say Abdullah said. You say, I looked it up and such and such and seven different references. And these according seven different to, references states to, that Article 3, that constant courts are established by treaty. You don't need to Abdullah said. Mm -hmm. 
And I continue to say that so that, you know, we can begin to look up solid sources and reference the sources so it becomes your own. As long as you say and Abdullah said, that means you don't know it. And we cannot afford for you not to know it. You can't help us. You can't help us if you don't know it. We're not looking for followers. Don't follow me. Listen to me. Give me opportunity for your ear. I'm giving you a look at the sources, but I'm not looking for followers. Next question. Next question. But we have the question answering. There's no more for me to this Q&A now. Islam. Islam. All right, Islam. Islam. Is there some type of time discrepancy, though, like from 1492 to that uh 1781 because it seemed like I mean the 1776 it seemed like a something in line with the with the the, the sequence of time is threw off of it. So as far as your knowledge goes, is it any type of discrepancies with the years or the way they they like threw off? No, I, I don't see no time discrepancy. I don't. I can't answer that. I don't see any time discrepancy. I mean, I'm just looking at. I'm giving you giving you dates regarding events you know but you said time discrepancy you're talking about the moorish year 1580 right but i don't really want to go into that regarding i want to just deal with you know the the facts regarding events and the reference to treaties when treaties were negotiating wars you're talking about the moorish year 580 years he's talking about 580 years in different and various Moorish treaties that I have in Moors Masonry. You see, he's talking about that. He's talking about, you'll see 1200, year 1200. All right, Hagira, here Hagira, you'll see that in the treaty. That's what he's talking about. He's referencing treaties that have, you know, that have 1200, 14, 1300, and it's like year 18 something. He's talking about that, a 500 year difference. That's what he's talking about. He's referencing, he's alluding to that. He's alluding to that in his question. I mean, that's, he, that means, and for him to formulate the question, he has had some knowledge of that because you can never formulate the question if that had never been brought to your attention. All right? So I want y'all to look, look, go look at the treaties that I have in Moors and Mace Street. You'll see it's 580 year difference. All right? That's what he's alluding to. All right, next question. Okay. Brother, I'm not asking for the information that you gave. I'm asking for the silence in us being missing as a structured, unified body on an international or national scale. That's the silence that I'm referring to. Does that mean that we have consented because we do not have that voice? That's my question. No. All right. Well, all right. Yeah, let's so look that, at consent. That's all. All right, no problem. The word consent. Let's let's look at the word consent by in contract. You look at the word consent because I can only analyze it by contract. Okay. All right. So to consent by contract, we're talking about full disclosure, an issue of full disclosure. Right. So we have Spain classified, denationalized us on the, the Spanish classification as well as Negro. France continued the denationalization with Noir, Code Noir of 1684 in the Caribbean, Code Noir of 1724, and English, it's modern English, it's Black Codes. That's the French. Code Noir of 1724 by the French was implemented in the Louisiana Territory by the French. So you have acts of denationalization coming with a couple with the acts of denationalizing a people is also stripped, is taking the children away, all right, 
and stripping them of the knowledge of who they are. Let's go to 1563. When Philip II, he nationalized us and classified the Moors as Spanish, forbade us to wear our Moorish headdresses, turban and fences. The children were taken away from us and raised by the priesthood and placed in orphanages. Forbade us to speak our native tongue, Arabic. Forbade us to use our Moorish names. Those are acts of denationalization and subjugation of a people. All right, now let's go back to the Treaty of Granada. In the Treaty of Granada, it protects the Moor uh, for, for November 21st, 25th, 1491, protects the Moor's interests, personal rights. What was the issue now? Was to remove the protection. So Philip II, and, and by classifying us as Spanish, removed the protection of that treaty because it doesn't say Spanish, it means more. So the act of denationalizing us, Spain by by classifying us as Spanish and, and Negro, Spain, Portugal of France, Noir, Code Noir, all right, you know, also Great Great Britain with black, you know, and then also Indian. So these these European occupying powers with a systematic approach, you know, going back to Francois Bonaire. Colonies, Johann Frederick Bumabach. Francois Bonaire, 1685, was his Nouvelle Division de la Torre. Colonies, and seven, from seven, 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 17, 17, 717 to 1737, with seven edition Systema Naturae. Johann Frederick Bumabach, in 1770, continuing that process, whereby using black, white, red, brown, and yellow, that system of, of race, of, the, of dehumanizing a people, that's through conquest, not by... So our not having a knowledge of who we are is not through consent. Right. Again. All right, let me... This is, this is, let me hear me out. This is, all right. When you push the argument of consent, you're leaving them off. Part, I'm not referring to that. I mean, no, I mean, no, like, no. Right no, you use the word consent, though. You right, asked right, to use the word that, consent. I'm talking about the, the word consent. Right, consent. I, I get it. But remember, you're talking about uh, governmental structure, and I'm I'm tying that in by us not having governmental structure. We are in 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 turn consenting because we won't even organize to present governmental structure. So and we're I'm consenting. disagreeing with you. I'm oh, okay, disagreeing okay. with you. Got, I'm disagreeing. I'm about, right, I'm and disagreeing, I, I, and I'm. I mean, I mean, in this day, not not from then. I mean, even like right now. So tie it into right now because the the information you're giving me, I'm conscious of that. But I'm talking about like like saying, hey, listen, we're we're not even on an international scale. We're not even on a national scale, so we don't even have a voice yet. We have to first organize, right. come together, stand there collectively in a unified session, and then say, hey, listen, you violated, and we're not there yet. And by us not being there, our absence is saying we're okay with this situation. Now Absolutely. you hear me? All right. I, I'm not, I'm in world court. Gotcha. I don't agree with you. I'm in okay, world court. I don't, I don't agree with you. Okay, You're not going to weaken my argument. I'm in world court. Okay. You're not going to weaken my argument by saying I, I can't use past history. You're not going to weaken my argument. Right. And, and I'm not trying to... No, 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 no. Hear me out. I'm to, I know you're not. Just please, I'm just trying to make okay, a point. Okay. Got you. Okay. Because this perfect, is what they're perfect. trying to do, brother. I'm trying to make a point. I got you. I okay. got you. Okay. So let me, let's, let me have this, brother, please. Got you. You're not going to weaken my argument, European colonists. I'm just making a point. Got you. By saying I can't use past history. That's a weakening that I can't use Francois Bernard, Johan. I can't use Cold Noir. I can't use 1563. You're not going to weaken my argument. So when you look at, say, if you, when you start with noun, you're weakening your argument. You're letting them off the hook. I Understanding definitely... how you're shaping your argument, though. I know. I'm, I'm with you, you brother. No, I'm, I'm you're saying you now. Completely. You're saying now, though. You keep saying now. Now. Right. Now. 
Right. That's what because, I'm saying. So because so that, I'm, referring that's why to, I'm only referring I, to why I use consent. I'm not talking about we consented then. I'm saying by us not collectively coming together right now, we, me and you, us collectively, everybody on it's this. It's not call, consent. So it's what I'm saying, we, brother. That's, I that's understand what, I, that, what you're saying. It's not consent. Okay. You can't, once again, brother, you got to go through the past, though. Remember what brother, you're giving me. Every Everything you're okay. saying, I'm we confident. Wanna, we, got, we, got, we got 30 I'm more only, seconds. 30 more seconds, okay. brother, so we can move on. But, 30 more seconds. Go ahead. Brother, I'm only trying to be clear about what you say that I'm saying. I can tell you what I'm saying. You can't tell me what I mean by consent. Let me tell you what I mean by consent. I'm not referring to the consent of that information. I'm referring to the consent of the absence of a unified voice on a governmental structured scale for nationality. That's what I'm talking about. We are silent in that area. And because and we I'm are saying it's not consent, area, and I gave you my reason. It's not consent. It's that's not consent. That's I'm just I'm saying. Brother, you. I'm, the, I'm talking hold on, that I agree with you by saying that that's perfect. I hear you now. That's what my answer. Right. What's my question? You've right. answered. And I'm, I this is for everybody again. I'm going to make this last point. It's not consent because of past history. Got you. We can't just focus on now today that we are not organized today. You know, for the past ten years, you cannot remove the past history that brought us to the state of incompetence. They have a hand in it. They have a hand. They forced us into the schools. They have a hand. Spain, France, England, Netherlands, United States have a tremendous hand in our massive ignorance. They have a hand in that. Well done, brother. Well done. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Wow. Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, and again, that's why I say I'm not challenging you. I'm really trying to, to grab it. And, and I, I, need I don't it. mind if you did. I didn't, it didn't matter if you did. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. I, 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 that's, that's important what you did because I, I, I'm trying to see it like we're not in that position because of what they've done. So you're absolutely right. Had they not done that, when we would be in position. So you're absolutely right. Perfect tie in. And I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Wow. Perfect. Next All question. Right. We got about 12 minutes. All right. Um, I have a question and no more. There you go. Come on. Come on. Uh, with it. Brother Abdullah, you brought up some real um, interesting information tonight as far as um, the treaties and some of the things that you mentioned leading up to 1492. I just want to know where can I um, research that information at because I haven't been able to come across a lot of posts. You're talking about the, treat the, oh, yeah, the Crusades? Crusades. Let's yeah. look up the Crusades. You're putting Crusades against the Moors. This, this, yeah. And they'll give you the reference. You'll go to other to other books. I have it in my part more more than Mystery Part One, but you can look. You can Google Crusades Against the Moors, and it'll lead you to other for books and a whole lot of references. All right, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. There's um uh, another thing it's that I I see the point that you're bringing to brother uh, is that we have to become so uh, competent with the prior information before yeah. we can even try to step out and think we can structure anything. We have to have the right concepts starting from the beginning of the uh, of the conquered, uh, the crusades against the Moors. We need to go all the way back in history so we can bring out this information correctly when we're presenting ourselves. Is, uh, so I do get that Absolutely. from the lessons so I get I get why uh, I get how you're bringing the lessons and that we have to have our concepts completely correct and be able to present them in those timelines of things that occur to bring us to where we are today. I absolutely, 
Absolutely. Substantiated evidence. That is right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. This is hot. <laughs> That's hot. Yeah. I'm so, glad we had this time for I didn't think we would have time for QA. I, I you know, I, I mean I don't you know I didn't know we would have I thought it would take me two hours to go through the whole, but I'm glad we had time for QA. Thank mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. Uh also, is there a way I can receive the recordings of this call tonight? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, you know the recording, sister. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll send that. We'll send it. We'll put on the um this will be all posted on for the love of Moors telegram page for the um for the uh the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law telegram page. Uh we'll have uh Okono's page and so forth. And I also send it to you know, some people personally. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But Thank it will you. be on the telegram page. As soon as Terrence sends me, I'll send it to the I'll post it on the telegram page as well as also on my Facebook page. And then share yeah, also yeah. share it. Y'all share it on your Facebook, your social media platform. Yes. Right. Yeah, so this I'm is live open. now with it. So I'm sharing it right, right. now as I'm speaking. Wow, I said right. it. Yeah, that's perfect. And he had that's asked me, he did ask me, could he do that? He did ask me, could he do that? So he didn't do that on his own. He did that's ask right. me. Yep. Because they can't. They can't. This, like I said, be, they're he's he's live on his Facebook page, so they're not actually part of the class. So that's that's why I said that was fine. You know, this is a close. These are you know, this is actually invited. You know, class, but he's live. That fact that which is you know, when I thought about, it, I said, oh, that's fine. All right. And I just want to say one more thing because I'm just so excited for the information you brought tonight. One thing I have learned in my walk with uh, this on you know, my journey since 2018 is we know these things, but we have to have that information to prove it because this law is all about what you can prove, not what you know. So that's, we know that's why I give, give the references. Exactly. We know what they've done, but show me the proof. Exactly. And if you if you if you do the due diligence or looking for the proof, you'll find it. You know, if you don't like I said, don't just take what I'm saying, my word, you know, look it up yourself, you know. And I, you know, so but you but you have to be given some proper concepts to, you know, you have to be given some type of roadmap, you know, because I couldn't have not come to this understanding without Shim. I'm just keeping it real. There's no way. There's no way. I'm in trapped with 25 years of misconception. There's no way I would have grown with through this without Shem. I mean, I've done the work. I've did the research. I mean, I've sat, I got eight, nine Shem Malachi Bay's, you know, uh, 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 composition book. I mean, wrote my from notes, and we were able to develop a career. But do, do I do diligence and study it, but do Shem on this giving, you know, providing proper concept and, a, and directing us to proper, you know, by first treat he gave, Shem gave us. Was the uh, was the um, the seventh the uh, 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 what's it called the uh, propagation uh, yeah 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 um, propagation yeah yeah New Haven versus Society versus New yeah, Haven yeah. case yeah. that was the first treaty case and that case opened up a opened the door I'm like whoa whoa Society versus New Haven um let me see if I can find it yeah the uh, propagated this uh what's called the uh Society of the Propagated Faith of uh of um society of the propagated faith uh, versus um New Haven. Yeah, something like yeah, something yeah, society society versus New Haven would be the short uh eighteen sixty three, something like that, Terrence. Uh if I can't we'll, we'll find put, it now, we'll put on the telegram it, page. I, okay, good. I'll put it on the telegram page tonight. So yeah, I'll right. put it on the telegram good. page. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have it in my, you know, I'll just go to my search in my email and I'll find it. I'll post it. All right. Yeah, we ain't trying to keep no information away. Oh, no. So go, go, y'all, what y'all say? Go to the Telegram. I post a lot of stuff on there on the Telegram pages. Uh, like I said, for the love of Moors, uh, we have Brother Viserius, all right, who is uh, one of the, uh, he will be one of the panelists. Tar Terrence is one of the panelists. Sister Mia Moore. With one of the panelists, Sister Pocola Kusar Il is one of the keynote speakers. And I said she's one of my, she will be my guest on Moorish Monday with Abdullah Il Tale Tale Mosi Bay on the 
uh, uh, Mag Magna Crystal Pyramid uh, YouTube play page, and I'll have that posted for Monday. And she will she'll be she'll be talking about the ancient matriarchal principles of civilization. All right. All right, so we got about five minutes. Um, I'm going to uh, share this real quick. Um, and Brother Quasi, Brother Quasi is a uh, uh, panelist. Yes. Brother Quasi was on earlier. He was, is he still on? Yeah, but Brother Quasi was on earlier. All right. So we got five minutes, Terrence, what you want to do? Um, I am trying to see if you can actually see this. Let me see. All right, let me see. Um, all right, let's do this. All right, here we go. All right, so we have coming this May 18th. Get your tickets soon. The Moorish, Moorish, Moorish American Birth Governance, Birthright, and Nationality Claim Conference, Political Unity. You see there the misnomers, Black Moor, Black and Moor, and Black. You have Black Moor, how it's spelled in the 1560 Geneva Bible. Black Moor, how it's spelled in the 1599 Geneva Bible. Article 15, Section 2 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights states, everyone has a right to a nationality. Principle 3 of the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of the Child states, the child shall be entitled to a name and nationality. UNESCO proclaims 1979 as the International, uh, International Year of the Child, and UNESCO proclaimed 1985 as the International Year of the Youth. The location of the conference, Majestic Hall, 800 West Alney Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19120, time from 10.30 a.m. to 12 to midnight. Cost is $125, includes lunch and dinner and Moore's Ball. You can get the, um, once again, this flyer, and I'll post the flyer again, as well as the link for the event right on the Moroccan Post School of Government International Law Telegram page, as well as the the uh, For the Love of Morris Telegram page on my, it's on my Facebook page. It's pinned. And uh, we'll have the next flyer, which have the names and pictures of of the various keynote speakers and speakers uh, and panelists that'll be available this weekend or early next week. All right? So as I said before, we have I'll have the various keynote speakers and panelists for the next seven Moorish Mondays. All right, that is my platform on the Magnet Pyramid, uh, Magnet Pyramid Crystal uh, YouTube page. All right, uh, Brother Quasi did a wonderful job. Uh, Quasi, uh, I see if he has that available. Uh, he had his um, his class is every uh, first second was the second and fourth. Second and fourth Wednesday of the month, but he had it last night because he didn't finish, he didn't get through the Easter presentation. So Quasi did a wonderful job on the astronomical origin and true meaning of Easter. It was great. Brother Quasi's on now. All right, Brother Quasi. All right. Uh so Brother Quasi put Society versus New Haven in the chat. Do you see that? So Society versus New Haven is in the chat. Uh Brother Quasi, is that link? Is your is that um, recording available now? Is the recording of your class you did last night available? Yeah, right. yeah, it's on the uh, Tribal Dream of Study Group page. Uh, the uh, can you put, All right, can you put that on the For the Love of Moors YouTube uh, Telegram page and for the on uh, for the, uh, the Study Group Telegram page? Yes, I got to download Telegram to my laptop, and then I'll be able to post it. In All right, so once she once I she do it Telegram. Tomorrow. All right, no problem. So Quasi is going to post that on the very on the two Telegram pages, so that he did a wonderful job. It was a, it was great to see someone else, you know, give the uh, uh, astronomical origin and true meaning of Easter, how it relates to fertility and Venus, as Easter is Venus. So it's, it was very good, man. I was highly impressed and very pleased, you know. And I will not be doing. I thought about this today, Quasi. I will not be doing, and I usually do. On my Facebook lives and other platforms, I you uh my Facebook lives, I've do it on different platforms, uh my Instagram, Telegram, I would do every every holiday, but I'm not gonna do Easter 
because Quasi did a great job. I don't I don't want to overshadow what Quasi did. I will not do a presentation on Easter. All right. Quasi did a wonderful job. So I will not, you know, um anybody request me to do a presentation on Easter, I would I would turn them down. I'm not gonna do a presentation on Easter. All right, I would direct them to Brother Quasi. All right, all right. So um I do want to bring up for the uh the hotel uh Philly in uh suites. Um, you want to talk about that, Abdullah? Um, you can go ahead. You do. You got it. Yeah, the Philly and the Suites. Um, for uh the eighteenth, or oh, or actually, those rooms are going pretty fast, and uh, yeah, so they're going pretty fast. So if if you're if you plan on staying in in the Philly area, um, we do have a discount at that hotel for what what is it? Uh, uh one twenty plus taxes, Abdullah. Yeah, so it's forty forty dollar discount. Yes. So it's yes. 120 plus taxes. That's the discount. It's $40 discount. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then those rooms are going pretty fast and, uh, you know, the, uh, it's, it's an Indian style hotel. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's all I had. Um, yeah. so we, 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 we're done. I mean, Brother, brother, brother. Oh, yeah, we're done here. So this recording will be available once Terrence gets it. They'll be on the on the uh, various uh, Moroccan Post School of Government International Law uh, um, Telegram page, as well as for the Love of Moors. And I'll send it to most of you personally. All right, through text and emails, and uh, we'll you know. So you'll definitely get it. Absolutely. Did y'all look Bro at? I would I would suggest y'all to review the March seventh part one. Part one of this pre of this series, which was done on March seventh, review that. It doesn't hurt to look at it again and take further notes. All right, you know. So review that and then review tonight's presentation. All right, brother Ab Abdullah. Before you go, I want to clarify why I said from the beginning, I will not be challenging you. I will not be debating with you. I really was trying to get understanding. I know better. So whatever, if it comes off as this, oh I'm challenging God. you. Please. Man. Dismiss that because I Brother, know. Listen, please come to challenge. I want to let them <laughs> know what you told me. I got to tell them what you told me. I was <laughs> okay, talking we to talk, Brother we talk about two or three times a week. This is my man right here. This, this, yes. this brother told me, he said, You might argue with me, but you will not ever out evidence me. That's what he said. He's, you will not and, present more evidence. So. <laughs> absolutely, but you, I, I but you definitely want to come to challenge. Definitely, want to I, I, yeah, yeah. Because, because that 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 strength right there. That shows yeah, yeah, strength. yeah. I don't. Yeah, that's not a negative, brother. So when I say challenge. No, no, that's no. not a negative, but, brother. But, I wasn't. And listen, I, I know it's not negative, but I just know better. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know better because uh, because you know, especially about that. I really wanted to understand it in another way because I get it. But it, I was trying to figure, you know, there was a statement that one of the so-called leaders said, by by sitting silent, you actually act, you, you give consent to what's going on, meaning police brutality was referring to. And by sitting in silence, you're consenting to it. And for some reason, I'm like, wait a minute, is that the same concept that we're doing right now? That's why I brought it up. So once again, mm -hmm. I was not challenging you. That was not a debate. No, that's suicide. So no, I really want to understand. Oh so, man, stop. Bro, nah, listen, see, don't bro, do that, man. That, that don't do that, been, man. Brother, don't listen, do that. Man, as anybody who witnessed that, they probably said, man, he murdered that dude. But I really wasn't nah, challenged. Don't do that, brother. Don't hold me up to that standard like that, brother. Man, no, bro. Brother, no, bro. It's, it's uh -uh. Like this. As long as you're not doing it to yourself, accept it when it comes from someone else. Peace. Real talk. All right. All right. <laughs> all right That's my man right there man. <laughs> um, um, thank y'all for joining tonight and yeah. we are we're, we're, we're done all right thank you everyone thank you all right peace 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 and love. Peace, peace 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 on, peace right peace yeah. Islam peace love Islam, Islam.